Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Fraser from RugbyStrengthAndConditioning.com. Welcome back to my channel where today we are looking at 10 of my favourite exercises we use in the gym to make our players powerful and explosive on the rugby pitch. So guys, stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to show you how to perform a power test at home or in your gym. So easy to do and it's a staple test that almost every rugby club does. I'm also going to share with you standards of pro rugby players, semi pro rugby players and amateur rugby players so you can kind of compare and see where you are amongst the pros. So first up is the hang power clean which is an excellent exercise for expressing strength. As you become globally stronger with your squat and deadlift etc that should translate to your ability to use higher loads on hang power clean and Olympic lifting variations provided you're cycling them in and out of your program. One of the prerequisites before performing a hang power clean is to understand that you can actually hold the end position. So I tend to check my athletes that they can hold a good front rack position and catch the barbell before they have to catch the barbell. Now if you want a full breakdown on the clean, please do look at the videos that I'm linking here and both in my description where I've done a constraints based approach to the power clean and I've also done a power clean masterclass. So next we have the depth jump to box, which is a great plyometric exercise where we need to absorb force and express it as quickly as possible. Now let's not confuse depth jumps with drop jumps, which are submaximal jumps and you're spending the least amount of time on the ground as possible. Depth jumps is a max power output exercise where you're stepping off one box, producing as much force as you can on the floor and then getting up to another box. Clearly we can regress the drill based on the box height so you can step off a lower box which might be more appropriate for you or you can make the box you're jumping to slightly lower. The ground contact time on depth jumps to box will be longer than drop jumps but that's okay. You're getting in a jump position, spending the least amount of time you can on the ground but you're also having a trade-off because you're trying to jump as high as you possibly can. This is a great exercise that carries over to sprinting for rugby players. So loaded jumps using either the trap bar or a barbell is a great way to develop explosive strength for rugby players and contribute to a powerful game. If you're using the trap bar, perform it like you would a trap bar deadlift. Keep your arms long and out of the lift completely with your feet underneath your hips. Keep your back straight and explode upwards. If you're using the barbell, make sure you're pulling that barbell down on your back and as you explode upwards into a jump, don't let the barbell ride up and down on the shoulders. There should never be any space between the barbell and your shoulders. The depth height that you go to should be the same as a counter movement jump. So it's self-selected. Go as low as you feel you need to to produce as much force as you can to jump as high as you can. Of course, like the hang power clean, you can vary the load on the barbell or the trap bar depending on you know, how you've progressed your training and what period of training you're in. So the plyo push-up is as simple as it sounds but super effective. It's a great ballistic exercise for the upper body and we typically use it a lot in our realization phase of training, super set with a bench press or some sort of strength uh, movement pattern. When you're performing the plyo push-up, it should be the same posture as a normal press-up or push-up in that your arms aren't abducted to 90 degrees but more of a 45 degree angle. Make sure that you're contracting from head to toe and you're not being lazy through the midsection. So the med ball partner pass is a great rotational exercise for power. This doesn't have to be performed exactly the same way that you would a rugby pass, don't fall into that trap, but we are looking for full use of the kinetic chain and a really good rotation. Finish the pass the same way you would a rugby pass, all right? So follow through with the hands and also don't be afraid to mix up how your stance is. So perhaps you might be throwing over your leg in one, one instance in one set and then you might be going from a split stance with uh, an open pass on the other side. For the, for the purposes of developing rotational power, we can use both in this exercise as long as we're cycling it from either one week to the next week or we're, from set to set we're changing it. Hurdle jumps are another old school exercise and a staple in our power program when we're in intensification and realization phases. They are great for developing explosive strength and part of our speed program. We'll look at speed in another video and I'll break down my favorite exercises for that, but clearly there's a relationship between speed, power and strength. Hops for distance is another great simple exercise. When you're doing this exercise, imagine that you are hopping over a mini hurdle as well. So yes, you're going for distance, but we're also looking for um, knee pickup of that working leg. This will carry over more to um, sprinting and the speed side of things, which is obviously important for rugby and one of the reasons why we do power training. Another thing to look out for in this exercise is that your torso isn't going too far left or right 
and your center of mass stays over your base of support, which in this case is one foot. Okay, a regression of this that we often do in pre-season, early pre-season, is just hopping and sticking the landing, and we'll build up in intensity gradually, so we'll build up in distance and height, etc. And once we're there and I'm happy, we'll then move on to using this as a plyometric fast exercise. So the behind the neck split jerk is a really good way for developing explosive strength in rugby players. Just like the hand power clean, you can vary the load depending on what you're looking for. Other benefits to this exercise are that you can throw quite significant loads overhead and so of course you'll be developing the musculature of the shoulders and upper back and contributing to shoulder stability. When you're performing this lift, just like all the other jumps, have your feet underneath your hips. During the dip phase, don't go too fast, you don't want to lose the connection with the barbell. And during the drive phase, you're being as explosive as you possibly can. Get that barbell moving and then punch yourself under the barbell. From there, keep everything nice and tight through the midsection, through the trunk. Okay, and recover that barbell. Guys, it goes without saying that these power exercises are advanced. So don't try these if you are your first six months of training or you're unsure of how to do them. Make sure you have a professional look at what you're doing before you try and execute these exercises. Like I said, they are progressions, they are quite advanced. So the landmine punch is a really simple and shoulder friendly power exercise for the upper body. When you're performing the landmine punch, just make sure that your elbow isn't flaring out and away from you, all right? Keep that in nice and close to the body, get a good rotation, fully extend through the arm and just let that barbell go. Remember with all these exercises, we want to minimize energy leaks. We want to bring the force from our legs through our torso, through our hands, all right? So make sure you're twisting in a nice, strong and stable motion in this exercise, keeping your elbow nice and close to you and then releasing in the final moment. Remember that with all these power exercises, we must pay attention to what our trunk is doing. That's what lets us transfer the, the energy, the force that we're producing from the legs all the way through the body, through the kinetic chain into the hand. Okay, so pay attention to what your trunk's doing. Don't break your posture through the midsection and then have energy leaks that will affect force production. So finally, the power snatch from blocks is another great exercise for rugby players who are looking to be as powerful as possible. When you're performing this lift, the first thing to do is to make sure your hands are in the correct position. As we bring that barbell up, we want it to be sitting on the crease of our hip. To do so, we need a nice wide hand placement. In order to find the right hand placement, grab the barbell as I'm showing you here, walk your hands out until the barbell is in the crease of your hip. As you're performing the lift, keep the bar as close to you as possible and turn over that bar as fast as you possibly can. Okay guys, as promised, I have a power test for you that you can perform at home. Super simple to do. It is the counter movement jump without any arm drive, without using your hands. So your hands have to stay connected to your hip the whole time. So how can you assess that at home? Well, what you can do is go into the app store, download an app called My Jump or My Jump 2. I'm sure there's other apps that, that assess counter movement jump and other jumps. I'm not affiliated with My Jump in any way. Um, they don't sponsor the video in any way. Although if someone wants to start sponsoring videos, okay, talk to me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something that you can download quickly and use it to assess your counter movement jump. Now, if we're using specialist equipment like OptiJump or Force Plates, there's lots of information that we would want and take um, to assess like your, your power profile, your impulse, etc. For today's video and for making things easy to compare, we're just gonna look at jump height. So what's a good counter movement jump score for a rugby player? Listen guys, I'm going to share with you from my population, which are senior males that are pro and semi-pro and some amateurs. Okay, now you can go and look at the research. There's lots of research um, on this and um, to find out scores, but that's the population that we're working with. So if you get 50 centimeters or more, then you are in an explosive profile category for me. It's really, really good. That's like elite, well done. We have some players that do that. Um, I've seen players go up into the 60s, so don't let these numbers limit you in any way, but just be aware if you're, if you're jumping 50 centimeters, hands on your, on your hips, um, then that's elite, well done. All right, if you're in 42 centimeters up to 50 centimeters, then really, really good, very good. If you are in the 36 centimeters up to 42 centimeters, there's some work to be done on your explosive profile. Not a problem at all. And if you're at 35 centimeters or below for your counter movement jump, you've got some work to do if you're a rugby player. Guys, bear in mind these standards are, are just for fun, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean if you take your jump from 42 centimeters to 
50 centimeters that all of a sudden you're going to be a much better rugby player. You will be a much better rugby athlete and so your physical, your athletic potential is there and you just need to make sure that you're doing enough skills and tactical work to then capitalize on that new athleticism. Hopefully that makes sense guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do like, leave a comment and share with someone that also might enjoy it. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.